Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video. And today, it's finally time that we talk about playing in a squad. And more importantly, how to be a good teammate and avoid doing things that make your squad mad. This has been a much requested video and we've been meaning to do it for some time now. But with everything else we're working on, I can only do so much at once. But finally, finally it's the time. Here are 9 things you should be doing if you're playing with other people online. If you guys do find this video helpful and you do enjoy it, then a like will be super appreciated and be sure to comment down below if you have any other points you'd like to add. Also, quick shout out to everyone featured in this video. Nobody in these clips are bad teammates or did any of this on purpose. We merely played this way to illustrate the points in the video. Now, kicking things off at number one, nice and simple, always bring life powder. I'm sure I don't need to tell you guys what this does, but life powder is an item that when used will heal all your teammates in the vicinity. You need to be in the area so you can't just heal them from the other side of the map but this is an incredibly important item that you should never leave Astero without. Sure, most of the time your teammates can and will heal themselves and keep themselves alive, but there are situations where help is required. Say someone has taken one too many hits and they're stunned, but you can't get to them in time to knock them out of it, a simple life powder will give them some life to survive that next hit, in turn allowing them to follow up and heal themselves. Alternatively, maybe someone's been sent flying by a fireball, they're low on health and they're on fire and the tick damage from the fire would otherwise kill them. A life powder can prevent that. Maybe they're poisoned from a Rathian tail swipe and that poison is eating away at their health, but they're also being attacked in a corner and don't have a window to heal. Again, a life powder can save them. It might not be the greatest heal and you may only be able to carry three, but if everyone on your team has them, then in times of need, it'll make a huge difference. Obviously, if you're chatting to your team on voice chat, you can call out that you need one, but if not, just keep an eye on your teammate's health bar. If it's dangerously low, give them a hand. Life powder is easy to make and you can farm the necessary materials in town, so there really is no excuse for not having these with you 24-7. Next up, in at number two, hit stunned teammates. Again, another really simple one, but it makes a huge difference. If you take one too many consecutive hits from a monster, you can get stunned. This is where you have stars circling around your head, you're in that dizzy state and you can't do anything other than furiously wiggle the left analog stick on your controller and try and shorten that dizzy time. This state can be fatal, since if the monster decides to charge at you, you have absolutely no way of defending yourself until you snap out of it. So this is where your team come in. If you see someone is dizzy, run over to them and hit them. I appreciate that in the heat of battle you might not always see them in the field, but if you look at the life bar, this double star icon will appear to indicate that they're dizzy. In fact, if someone has just been knocked over, it'll appear just as they're getting up, so you know instantly if they're going to be in this state. Understandably, sometimes you might be on the other side of the map and might not have the time to run to them, and in those instances, the aforementioned life powder might be a better option. But if you're near, help them out. It is worth noting that occasionally skills like flinch free can hinder a teammate's ability to hit you with basic attacks, but in those cases, moves like kick, big knockoffs from heavier weapons, and even emotes can be used. Moving on from there to number three, pay attention for sleeping monsters. When you're hunting in a team, keep in mind that one or multiple members of your team could be using sleep type weapons or ammo, and if they are, then Sleeping Monster provides an incredible opportunity for damage, whether that be from a strong wake-up hit or bombs. It's something you should always aim to take advantage of, and we'll speak more about exactly how in the next point. But before that, it's important to pay attention for when the monster falls asleep. If you don't keep an eye out for this, and you continue to attack even when it's falling down, then one too many hits will see you wake it up, invariably with a weak attack. In turn, wasting a very valuable opportunity, and also maybe even your teammates' resources if they're using bullets or coatings for that specific reason. Additionally, keep in mind that each time an abnormal status like sleep or paralysis procs, the monster's tolerance threshold increases, meaning it takes longer to trigger the next time around. Now when a monster begins to fall asleep, the animation is generally pretty slow and obvious, and you have a window to hit it while it's going down, meaning you have plenty of time to stop what you're doing or roll out of your combos. Sure, there are a few combos you can't cancel, and at times this happens, but 9 times out of 10, you have enough time to react and stop what you're doing. However, if you're in the heat of battle and you perhaps don't see it falling down, then another very obvious tell is the background music. When you hunt a monster, music plays, but when it falls asleep, that music stops. That is a very obvious audio cue that the monster is falling asleep. So keep an eye or an ear out for this, and when you see it happening, stop what you're doing. However, in conjunction with this, point number four, be sure that you're waking up sleeping monsters with the strongest possible hit. For those of you that don't know, when a monster is sleeping, the hit that wakes it up has its damage doubled, meaning it's an incredible opportunity to get off some really big damage. As such, it should go without saying that you don't want to be waking it up with a simple slap or a weak hit. Don't be that person that runs over and thinks, oh gee, the monster isn't moving, this is my time to strike, and then hit the monster with something weak. Stop what you're doing and think. 
Look at your team. What is your team composition? It should go without saying, but if you have a greatsword user in your squad, they will always get priority when waking up a sleeping monster. If they can land that true charge slash, they have the strongest single hit in the game. However, if you don't have a greatsword user, then just decide who can do the most damage with a single hit. Is it a hammer user, a bow user with dragon piercer, a charge blade user with super amped element discharge? There are plenty of options, and you'll obviously need to decide based on what weapons people are using. However, it's generally safe to say that wake ups tend not to fall to weapons like dual blades or sword and shield, unless you're running solo. Additionally, on top of allowing the strongest hitting weapons to wake up the sleeping monster, remember to use bombs. Ideally mega barrel bombs, place them by the monster's head, and then more often than not, the wake up hit will also set them off, dealing some additional damage in the process. Keep in mind, however, that only the first hit actually gets the double sleep multiplier, but still, a stack of eight barrel bombs on the monster's head is some nice complementary damage. Do however think about your bomb placement. If you have a greatsword user and you want their hit to be the wake up hit, then don't place the bombs in front of the monster's head. Doing so will see the greatsword chop detonate the bombs and you'll invariably find that the bomb damage is instead the one that gets doubled. This also applies for light bowgun wyvern blast too. Try to place them to the side so that they get set off afterwards, not before. Of course, if you don't have any heavy hitting weapons on your team and the monster falls asleep, then bombs alone are a great wake up. Just ensure that if you're going to detonate the bombs, don't accidentally hit the monster in the process because, again, you might find the wrong attack gets multiplied. So in this example, I'm using sword and shield, so I step back a little, use the rise and slash to set off the bomb, but I'm nowhere near the monster, so the bomb damage is the wake up. So in summary, when a monster sleeps, ensure you're making the most of those opportunities and allowing the strongest hit to wake it up. Next up, in at number 5, look out for teammates mounting monsters. This is an important one and something people have had quite a few issues with online. Flash bombs are an incredibly useful tool. If a monster flies into the sky, a well placed flash can cause it to come crashing down, in turn providing you and your team with a small opening for damage. However, keep in mind this should only be done when the monster is flying and not mounted. If a teammate is mounting a monster, do not flash it. If they successfully complete the mount and topple the monster, the opening is pretty generous, allowing you and your team to deal some good damage. So if the monster suddenly jumps into the air, take a moment to look up. It's very obvious if there is someone on it, so nobody can say they didn't see their teammate on the monster. They have name tags and those are clearly visible. If you see your teammate on the monster, then use that time wisely. You can continue to attack the monster while it's mounted, that's fine. Or if you can't reach because it's flying, then use that time to sharpen your weapon. Heal, apply a buff, anything like that, and just be ready for when it goes down. I will however say, in select situations, flashes can be used, but only if your teammate requests it, and in truth, this is only really viable if you're playing on voice chat. Sometimes when I'm playing with 269 in Paradise, if someone messes up the mount and loses stamina and feels they won't be able to complete the mount, they can request a flash to bring the monster down. That's okay, but only if it's asked for. Otherwise, if nobody says anything, keep that flash in your pocket. Next up, in number six, be mindful of where you're fighting. In other words, don't fight in dangerous places. Sure, if you're hunting solo, you can attack a monster wherever you please, but if you're playing in a squad, then keep in mind other people need to attack too. As such, try to avoid fighting monsters in places that make it difficult for other people, like corridors. Corridors or tight areas might be a lance user's idea of a party, but for ranged users or some others, it can be an absolute nightmare and could often result in teammates getting smacked around or even carting. So generally speaking, try to fight in more open spaces, spaces that allow your team to move around more freely. Furthermore, if the monster is enraged and there's a red eye on the minimap, then remember that this is like a free challenger mantle. The monster will chase you if it's enraged, so it's very easy to just move to a better location and have it follow you in turn, making life easier for everyone. Number 7. Keep an eye out for traps placed by your fellow teammates. Traps, be that pitfall or shock, are an incredibly useful item in team play. They lock the monster in place, provide a great opportunity for damage, and in general, allow you to control the fight a little better. If a teammate puts down a trap for everyone to use, then try to lure the monster to that location. Don't just continue attacking the monster with no regard for anyone else. It's super frustrating if someone has the monster's attention, but makes no effort to try and move, and then shortly after the monster leaves the area, in turn wasting said trap. There's a very obvious audio cue when someone places a trap, so even if you don't see it, you can for sure hear it. The same can also be said for Wyvern Blasts. While a lot of the time they may be used when waking up sleeping monsters, sometimes they can be placed down mid-fight so that the monster sets them off by charging into them. While these might not have the same noticeable audio cue, if you notice them, again consider moving to lure the monster to that location. It only takes a second to move, and if doing so ultimately results in more damage, then it's a win-win situation, right? Moving on from there to number 8, know your place and consider your teammates. Fighting in a squad comes with its challenges. Assuming you're a full squad, then there are 4 people attacking the monster at once. And as I'm sure you're all no doubt painfully aware, some weapons can cause your teammates to trip. Additionally, some weapons are better placed at certain parts of the monsters. A prime example being a hammer user attacking the head so they can score that KO, or a longsword user taking advantage of their high reaching attacks to cut a tail. 
While it might be tempting to just rush a monster when it goes down and attack whatever is nearest to you, that's not really what you should be doing. You want to be mindful of your team. If you have a hammer user trying to work on that KO, there is nothing more frustrating than having a longsword user run up behind you, going all anime with their spirit combo, in turn tripping you and preventing you from doing anything. Placement is key, it's very possible for multiple people to attack the same part of the monster without tripping one another if they're just mindful of their placement. For example, the monster goes down, two people want to attack the head, stand either side, don't stand on top of one another, and you can both do damage. Longsword users, cutting tails is an incredibly important part of hunting, and while it's not exclusively your job, it is something you are particularly good at. And while the tail might not always be the weak spot you're looking for, your team will love you if you're able to cut off the tail, in turn scoring another carve and a chance at certain rewards. I'm not going to go over placement for every single weapon since that's a video in itself, but the take home point from this is just pay attention to your team. If you notice that you're tripping someone by accident, try to just move a little bit and give them some room. Don't just carry on with no regard for their ability to attack. Then finally, in the number 9, only take your share of the items from the blue box. This one is a small point, and in truth a lot of people don't seem to use these items so much these days, but in multiplayer there are always 4 stacks of items in this box one for each member of the team. So don't go in there thinking that all of that's for you and then leave nothing for someone else who might have wanted that stack of potions or that cauldron. But that my friends is pretty much it. Those are nine things you should be doing as a good teammate in Monster Hunter World. Of course there are other things to consider like bringing buffs for your teammates like demon or hard shell powders, using food vouchers before a hunt etc. But as a starting point if you do all of the above you'll have a great time playing online. Also keep in mind if you're not on voice chat you can use messages to let people know certain things, mount messages, messages to say you've placed traps, etc. But for now, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, thanks very much for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.